so we shot some stuff with Tim Henson, mm-hmm. and the day he came in for the shoot, this room was empty. And you know, <laughs> all right. So today I'm gonna go hang out with Jonathan Morrison. Jonathan has a tech YouTube channel with millions of subscribers. And he's got another YouTube channel called Jonathan and Friends. I'll link both down below. So we're going to go hang out with him, see his studio. Let's go do that. Here we go. Okay, uh, Colt Cappuccino. Yes. Okay. You make lattes. Minus the espresso. They're very weak. What are you mixing? Just milk in a cup. Love it. This is mix engineer. (laughs) I mean, like, the fact that, like, Starbucks employees like Colt are calling themselves mix engineers now is just... (laughs) It's so hard to (laughs) hear. It's like... Just out of like I, I don't know how to take you guys seriously. It's just a big scam. Yeah, but you created a whole channel out of it. I did. Uh, I created an ch- entire channel out of making people think that I'm a good mixer and I just mix milk. But you work with Sweetwater, and I know they send candy. But they, now, yes, now they're sending drinks, mixed drinks, mixed drinks, non-alcoholic. What does that even mean? <laughs> I don't know. You're the engineer. <laughs> Great. That's Man, how do I follow that? Uh, I'm, in you, te- I'm in tears still uh, from uh, from the intro from Mike. Uh, Jonathan. So Sweetwater is not actually sending out mixed drinks with new orders, but they are sponsoring this video. There'll be links down below to every piece of gear I use, and I'll put links below for some of the stuff that we talk about in this video. Those links go to Sweetwater. Sweetwater sponsoring this video. You can jump on any one of my videos, click on any one of the links, purchase anything you ever need, and I really, really appreciate that. I will also put links down below to Mike Cole's channel and Jonathan Morrison's channel, his big tech channel, and also his newer uh, music channel. You can see the, the video with Tim Henson and all of that stuff down below. So go check that out because I had a great time with both those guys. All right, back to it. Here we go. I feel like we should just start wild with you, right? Yeah, give me some juice. Okay. <laughs> Here's the juice. All right, this is playing God, Polyphia. Oh, perfect. I really wanted to hear this. You mix this? Yeah. Fucking A. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I dropped the F bomb. <laughs> I like that. I appreciate it. Yeah, that was seriously dope. Though there was one spot, there was like the guitar here and like some sort of like lo fi slap or something happening behind me also. And that was super dope. Because it was like so 3D, but that's the guitar and that's something else. Like Thanks for inviting me over. Oh, this is Mike's studio. Oh, this is Mike. Thank you for letting us borrow your <laughs> studio. Oh, God. I can't keep it together. <laughs> Mike, thanks for letting us borrow your studio for this interview. Yeah, we got like yeah. we got like six minutes. Six minutes. Oh, yeah. go, go this is the world's fastest interview before no, he, Mike kicks us yeah, out of here. He's gonna bill us double time. <laughs> uh, and then the last fun fact of this song: the acoustic guitar was recorded, uh, was recorded with an iPhone. Uh, I love it even more. So one of those things where it was a supposed to be like a demo and it ended up working. I've been doing that stuff more and more lately. Yeah. Like the work tape tracks just stay in the song. Yeah, because people are trying to make it sound like... There was a vibe and it's like, oh, cool, they just threw up whatever they had yeah. really quick. So there's personality baked right. into it as opposed to, okay, we're going to get the perfect yeah. positioning and the perfect right. microphones that complement this guitar. And you're playing. Yeah. And then you drive all the personality right. off of it. Yeah. I bet your room feels empty Since you gave me back my things How'd you make it look so easy? Did you made us sleep? I hope it makes you sad Now that you're alone Did you made us sleep? I hope it makes you sad Now that you're alone It's a dance in a Wednesday
tell you how excited this makes me for music. Let's go. Like, it's like it's new. It is new. It's like it's the first time you're hearing it. Yeah. And I've heard this a bunch. Yeah. And it's still like... <laughs> It hits so hard and so different. I got some more hits coming. Let's do it. Tell me about this room. It's new. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's dope. It's Thanks. very dope. Give me a rundown of like the gear and the speakers and stuff. A lot of Genelex. Okay. 7.1.4. Uh, okay. 8341s, 8331As, all full range three-way speakers, which is cool. I think I was talking to you earlier. They're mm -hmm. crossover at 55 for like the... The, the audio nerds out there, so you yeah. get a little more low end everywhere. Get a little more oomph out of the sides and the back yeah, and, and the tops. And, and a big ass sub. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, Apogee converters. S Symphony IO, yep. uh, Mark II, special edition, a little extra sauce. It was saucy, all right. It sounded really good. Really, really good. When uh, when this room get put together? Like two weeks ago? Yeah. <laughs> How long did it take? Uh, this room was empty 45 days ago. Wow. Uh, we had yeah. built our first space, our first Atmos space, mm -hmm. only a year ago, so I didn't think anything new would be a thing this quick. Yeah. And I just kind of fell in love with Atmos yeah. and wanted everybody to hear it, so stupidly we decided to figure out how we can build it on the go and build a mobile Atmos rig and took it to a coffee shop where you apparently work. Mm -hmm. and I took it to my, my home Starbucks. <laughs> And, to, and to, that, to, you really are. I need to give you credit for bringing me from mixing drinks to mixing music. <laughs> Mike, he has an impact on all of us. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm like crying. <laughs> yeah. So, this is some of the most disgusting low end uh, you may ever hear in your life. Woke up in a city of angels. There's something off about awesome. this place. No friends in a city of strangers. Somebody's gonna clip your wings. One, two, three, don't trust me. Just keep me company. Yeah, we're only human. Only human. You're here because I make you feel shit. No difference if it's love or is so stupid like the percussion and the swirling and like how everything was like falling from the ceiling and we shot some stuff with Tim Henson mm -hmm. and which was a killer video by the way I'll link it down below thank you yeah yeah that was fun Tim is crazy yeah the day he came in for the shoot this room was empty and <laughs> you know it was you know the only thing was here was the treatment so okay cloud stuff on the walls no speakers, no stands, no computer, no mm -hmm. nothing. He was getting here about 10.30 to 11 a.m., so we got up like at 4 a.m. that day and sprinted and essentially had to build this room in four or five hours. <laughs> when you say build, like running all the cables and everything? Everything, yes. Like connecting everything, calibrating, getting what? the computer, everything. I, I think something that helps is, you know, I'll... Uh, kind of relate a lot of things to sports and trying to do your homework early. Mm -hmm. um, whatever you do, if you're trying to do as much prep mm -hmm. as possible ahead of time, it just makes things easier. Yep. So, you know, a lot of the chaos before that was making sure everything was lined up and then yep. you have a backup to your backup and yep. just in case that doesn't work. And you had all this experience with setting up like these mobile rigs anyway. Yes. So, so we, you were already used to like running and gunning yes, an Atmos rig. We had gone through the boot camp yeah. a few times. So we were like fairly confident. There was one moment I freaked out because the, you know, the, the wild card of this room is the computer and the interfaces in the next room. Mm. Preemptively made that move, assuming that a 30-foot optical <clears throat> Thunderbolt cable would work. That way we could leave the computer in the other room. Yep. You know, it would allow us to keep any, like, breakout cables or snake-type stuff in the next room and yeah. keep this as minimal as possible. Totally. And uh, there was one moment where it just wasn't working. Yeah. And, you know, I was pretty, like, chill that day. Yeah. Minus, like, running around and Mike yelling, but... <laughs> The the moment where like I just plugged it in and I wasn't getting anything on the display, mm -hmm. you know, looked at Travis and 
the the bad thing with the power conditioner in there mm-hmm. is even if when it's off, the light is on. Ah. Uh, so you know, I didn't have the power conditioner turned on, so it was just a power thing. So check your power supply. But it worked. It worked. And wow. Yeah, it was a wild day because we obviously shot the thing in the commercial, but yeah. then also surprised him with an Atmos mix he had never heard. That's awesome. Mike gave him a guitar lesson. You gave Tim Henson a guitar lesson. This is just a fun song. This clock element is is, is rotating the entire time like a clock. Is it like every measure it turns? Yeah. It feels like it's turning every measure like over and over, Yeah. which has a very cool... another element that I hadn't considered yet of like tempo based movement. Publicly your background is is like tech YouTuber, right? I guess. I'm a mixed bag a bit. Okay. Yeah. I uh how how did you make like and now you're really pushing forward this the music the Atmos side of things, the new YouTube channel, right? Like Yeah. I mean, uh I I obviously love video and tech. Mm-hmm. Uh it was kind of just inherently burned into me, I think. Um you know, not to go super deep or sad or whatever, but uh, music just is, it hits different because uh, my dad got me into it when mm-hmm. I was 17 and, you know, I just loved guitar like maybe nothing else. And, yeah. you know, I would just play it, you know, till 4 a.m. And, um, you know, that kind of actually goes deeper too because he got me an interface, you know, when he maybe shouldn't have or couldn't have yeah. uh, at the time, but he surprised me. And that got me into recording. That's and, awesome. you know, it's like you go from sticking a guitar directly into a shitty PC, mm-hmm. uh, which sounds like garbage yep. just because you're trying to learn and explore. Um, but then going from that to the interface, and then it kind of changes your life. Um, yeah. And, you know, he passed away not too long after, which, mm. you know, kind of shook me and my brother and mom. Yeah. And it was like slowly pushing me away from music. Um, I think, you know, uh, instinctively you want to turn to it and you mm-hmm. know, feel better, but you feel worse. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the parallel of that and then growing up and then you have bills and responsibilities and it's like you're supposed to be a grown up. Yeah. And then somehow the YouTube thing happens mm-hmm. and video takes over and that becomes all of your time. So I think in the back of my mind, I never wanted to let go of music, mm-hmm. um, you know, even like I said earlier, the Ensemble was the first nice interface yeah. I ever bought when I worked at Sam Ash. Oh, nice. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, to go from that, and then that introduced me to the duet. So I always had that in the back of my mind. Mm-hmm. And 2019 or so, I think, was when I made a conscious effort to at least push back into music. Got it. Um, and it was tough, right, because I think by then... People were confused, and a lot of the a lot of the time it was like, "Why is this tech guy trying to do music?" Mm-hmm. Or like, "What's the deal here?" Or the optics of it from the outside well, looking in. Yeah, and like not only that, but why is he neglecting tech? Tech. Like, you have a YouTube channel. Like, why aren't you doing unboxings and stuff? And there was confusion of why would you waste your time, Loot and you know Emma and Jackson. Uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that I played you, they were one of the first groups that not only like changed music for me in terms mm-hmm. of modern production. In 2020 happened, and I used a lot of that time to get back into playing guitar and just really just trying to work and earn a place in the room. Yeah. And I never wanted it to be, like, given to me or, you know, because he shoots video or whatever. Yeah. You know, I wanted to earn it and uh, eventually did, and that turned into releasing and making music. You know, every time you hang with somebody, you learn a little piece. Yep. Being in the room with those people... Like, you can't go to school for that stuff. No, you cannot. And I cannot teach you that at school. And it's just like, it was an invaluable thing for me that I think, you know, gave me little bits of skills over time. And that's the only way I've ever gotten better is just by hanging around with great people. Yeah. Um, And then that naturally led to this. With Atmos, you have LFE. Right. Uh, and in film, they only use that for whooshes and you know, effects. Right. Uh, but it's also, a, you, get a, it's a, you get a lower extension. Right. So like, you don't have to add it the entire song, but if there's like a section where you want a little more low yep. end, now you can. Yep. And you couldn't get that before. Where's it coming from? Yes, everywhere. Now look at me now. Uh, Look at me now. Always kind of knew it deep down. Back when that. 
Yeah, that's dope, man. Yeah. The. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Anybody who is getting into it because they feel like they're forced to, mm -hmm. or because the label wants them to, mm -hmm. or because you have to mix it, like that's the wrong way to go about it. I agree. Um, it's not replacing stereo, but for me, it's just a different way to, to write and arrange and as any creative person, you know, mm -hmm. and someone who wants like your story or someone else's story to be told, like what cooler way than, yeah. than this? Yeah, hundred percent. And that is something that like in the very, very beginning, well, like a year ago, I was starting to feel forced into this whole thing. Right. And that has completely flipped for me. Yeah. And I'm just so pumped about like the creative side of it, the yeah. creative freedom that we get. And like we were chatting about it today, like the idea that we don't take a $5,000 acoustic and mic it up with 10 grand worth of microphones into a vintage Neve chain just so we can slice it and stick this acoustic guitar in this one tiny little spot. Yeah. Like the idea that we don't have to do that and we get to experience the full glory of all these sounds yeah. is so cool. Yeah, and it's like dynamics is one of my favorite things and the ability to go from soft, like you talked about a push and pull and mm -hmm. Um, you know, to make something feel bigger because you made something else smaller. Yep. Um, like those are the things on paper that you know I think have inspired me, and, and, and in a lot of ways, like Atmos gives you that. Gives you the ability to take that concept to the fullest extent. Yeah. And you know, you can play with space. You can play it with softness. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, we as we were talking about it, but you know, uh, there's a lot of grumpy stereo guys. Who are also grumpy at the loudness wars, and right, you know, in, inherently Atmos is quieter. Yes, you know, the deliverables at negative eighteen right. versus like you're slamming stuff at probably negative six, negative five, negative five, negative four and a half. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that's loud. Um, yeah, so you're you're getting more dynamics. It's it's quieter uh, in a good way, right? Mm -hmm. And there's just more space for everything. I spent the entire plane ride here, and I'll, I'll talk about this in other videos, but I spent the entire plane ride here to LA, A being stereo mixes with the Atmos, the spatial audio mixes in my headphones the whole way. And it by the time the four hour plane ride was over, I preferred the Atmos stuff, if it was a good Atmos mix, because there's not, there's. There's definitely some bad ones. But yeah. if it was a good one, I preferred it, and I was trying to analyze why I preferred it. And I think at the end of the day, it was about dynamic, mm -hmm. because it's not crushed to death. Yeah. And like you're right, there's a lot of people that have been screaming at the loudness wars forever, and this is, this is a way around it. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not competing for loudness with this anymore. You're not trying to find space. The energy isn't coming from slamming a mix bus compressor and a limiter. The intensity is coming from everywhere. Yeah, and moments, right? And like, moments, yeah. Awesome, dude. Are you at all mindful of the fold down when you're mixing stuff like that? No, because I'm not trying to fold it down. Got it. You just don't even care. Uh, like, just do, make it the best in this environment. I mean, you're going to try and pay attention. Like, you'll inherently, you know, listen with headphones and stuff. But yeah. I'm not, like, I'm not trying to make that most sound like stereo. Like, the stereo right. is st stereo. And yeah. If you want to listen to 2.0, listen to that Go one. for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, my big thing is, like, AirPods, you know, I think with Logic, you can also hear how it sounds on MacBooks and mm -hmm. things like that. So, yep. um, and even though, like, with that said, I'm not saying, like, fuck it or whatever, but, you know, because a lot of the stuff does translate well. Um, right. And I think with Logic, they also do a really good surround bounce. Yeah. Uh, like it's just a 2.0 wave. Nice. Uh, and it translates a lot. But the other thing, too, I would like to advocate and, you know, really emphasize is I'm fully aware, like, this is a make-believe fantasy room. And, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like that with YouTube in general, right? Like, it feels like a make-believe. Not that it's not an insane amount of work. Um, yes. But it, it is a make-believe thing, right? Like, it, it is crazy that there is a camera pointed at us, right. uh, and, you know, somehow we can go to Mickey D's and get a mixed single <laughs> served by McMike. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
you don't need this, right? Like the Polyphia mix that I played you, mm-hmm. I truthfully, I started that in AirPods and I probably did about 85% of that did in you? AirPods because Tim sent me the stems and I was so hyped. I was in my car, I had my MacBook and I didn't want to wait, you know? So I just started mixing it in your car. Yeah, uh, with my MacBook and AirPods. And then you take it to the system, right? Sure. And then, you know, once you learn your room, you can make educated decisions of, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm going to do here is going to translate to a certain way here. Yep. And I think, and especially if you're in Logic and using AirPods, mm-hmm. like, A, your, your, the barrier to entry is just so much smaller, right? Mac mini AirPods, yes. you're, you're mixing in Atmos. Yep. I'm not going to sit here and say that that should do that professionally. Right. But... It's possible. Get started, and yeah. then you know that. You, At you, least you start figuring out like the workflow, and yeah. you start figuring out how to how to do things. Right, and then you can take that to a studio, even if you rent the place, yep. and reference it and check it. And then you know systems and the way to do it is getting more affordable. So yep. you know, don't be discouraged to to jump into it to think that you need this. Like this, right. this is a like this is a luxury. One hundred percent. I don't want anybody to be you know discouraged or feel like. You're forced, right? Again, right. like you should just be excited. The interesting thing, and some of the guys in here right now have, have discussed that since I got here, that like they were on the fence or wasn't sold until they sit in the hot seat. Right. Watching that light bulb go off for people the first time they hear it and being like, oh, I get it now. Right. I want everyone to experience that. The thing that you really got to think about is a lot of that is like old stuff or things that were mixed for it just because it had to be. But yep. What's exciting is the kids who are going to grow up with this yes. and they're going to create like this. Yep. Like we're just scratching the surface and there's going to be so much insane stuff. Yes. That is made for it. I completely agree. So tell me uh, what's like the goal for this room? Like obviously you you mix in here like sure. and you played me a bunch of your mixes and they're really really great. Thank you. Yeah. Um what what's Wait, like Mike, the- can I can I take that compliment? No. <laughs> yeah, I think this room happened so fast. I still, I don't truthfully know what it will or could be. Mm-hmm. I think you know part of the goal was not to necessarily give up our old space or to to be here all the time. But I think the you know aesthetic was a huge piece for me. And it's beautiful, and it looks good from every angle. And like the camera, I mean, you guys have already seen at this point. Like the camera shots in here, just it's great. It's a fake light. Yeah, yeah, fake light. <laughs> It's awesome. Um, but I, I wanted a place that I could obviously mix, mm-hmm. create um, something that was cool to write mm-hmm. or just have a session. But at the same time, too, you know, I'm, I'm very amped on the idea of doing, you know, not just the music, but the tech side and the mm-hmm. video side. And I, you know, this is essentially five years of just really in the weeds yeah. trying to be able to get to this point. Um, so it's exciting to feel like it's possible. So, yeah. It's not just music, it's writing, it's it's video, it's tech, it's everything. And, um, you know, I would love to do more with this space. There's a second B room. Uh, there is a, you know, space upstairs that I would mm-hmm. love to put, like, drums and an upright and mm. turn that into a tracking space. So kind of the sky is the limit. That's awesome. Killer, man. Well, thank you for letting me see your space. Thank you, Mike. And uh, let me listen to some of your stuff. Thanks, yeah. I appreciate you. Have you watched Community? No. Real quick, so it's gonna be a quick. Are we doing this? Yes, yeah, so okay. but it's quick, it's like lightning quick. How? Yeah, like, hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, Mike, is there anything you would like to add? Make sure to check out Colt's channel. Wait, this is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> make sure to check out our signature uh, smoothie coming out next month. Starbucks.org. Yeah, Starbucks.org, not .com. We're in a very lengthy legal battle with them. But with your support (laughs) on our Kickstarter, we can make it happen. I think that's it. I don't know. I think that's (laughs) it. (laughs) Great. Okay. (laughs) I wish I could have kept a truly straight face for that whole thing. (laughs) 